Hey y'all, it's Tasha with Pine Knot Family Farm. Welcome back to our channel. Today is another canning episode. We're going to be canning some pineapple. And I wanna dedicate this video to three of my good friends because they have been patiently waiting, and I mean patiently, for me to do this video. And that is Denise at Gemini Homestead, Jared at Reap What You Sow Homestead, and Anna at Mimsy's Garden. So if you have not checked out those channels, they are wonderful ladies. They've got lots of good information on their channels and I'm gonna leave their links below. So I done a video a while back of the hummingbird cake. I'll post that right here. And I used my canned pineapple and those girls have been drooling over it ever since. I've got plenty in the pantry. Um, normally when I catch it on sale, I buy three or four cases of them at a time. I didn't catch it on sale any this year, which we still had plenty left over. I don't know if I just missed the sale or pineapple didn't go on sale. Last time they were 99 cents a piece. So I went ahead and picked up three from Aldi. I usually like the fruit from Aldi. It's, it's some of the best fruit I've found actually. So we're gonna show you how to can pineapple today. It is super easy. If you're new to canning, this is a water bath method. I would recommend that you start with a water bath if you're new to canning and do a simple recipe like this just to kind of get used to things before you jump into the pressure canning. Now, yes, pressure canning chicken raw pack is easier. There's way less steps, but if you're new, start with a water bath canner and do something simple like this. Um, this pineapple is awesome. I mean, if we go somewhere and people have sliced pineapple sitting out on a fruit tray or a buffet bar or something like that, I don't eat pineapple. I love this pineapple. You put it in the refrigerator, you get it really good and cold, take it, pack it in your cooler whenever you're on a summer picnic or at the lake or something like that. It is amazing. Um, you pack it in your own juice, its own juices, a simple syrup. It is so sweet and it is so, so good. So I'm glad that I found this method because now I enjoy eating pineapple. So let's First get to it. First thing is I'm gonna do some um, quartz and some pints just depends on where we're taking it or how we're using it as to how much we open up. I've got these just sitting in a little bit of water, starting to come warm. I've got water in here that I'm gonna make my simple syrup. And I've just turned my water bath canner. Um, it's between two and four if you can see it back there. So just getting it warm. And I'm gonna take just some vinegar, spray my water. This helps from getting the cloudy jars um, the film on the outside. We're gonna let that start to warm up. I'll actually probably crank it up a little bit at this point. I know, save the tops of these and replant them. That takes like two years I've heard. I don't have time for that. I don't have time to be bringing it in and out. I'd love to do it, but it's just not on the priority list right now. So you're just gonna take just like you normally would a pineapple. And you can go back and trim it a little bit closer once you get it all off. I don't like any of the eyes left in it. Don't bother Levi, but I don't like it. It looks pretty good. You can see there's still some dark spots, but you're not going to get it all off. And they do make an um, pineapple pour. I think we've got one somewhere. I've never tried it. Um, I just normally cut it close to the core. You see that whole bad spot on that one. Take your core, throw it to the side. Now you're just gonna cut these in about one by one chunks. Maybe one or two bite size. Cut that bad spot off of there. Make sure you check with a reputable source like the Ball Canning Book or the U.S. 
FDA health website, healthy canning website. I'll leave those links below. Um, and do your research. This is the way I do it. This is how I can it. Um, I know in the ball book, it does not say anything about doing the cores into the syrup water. That is how I do it. And I am by no means a canning expert. So make sure you check for your area, even on the processing times. And I've got maybe two quarts of water in here. And we are going to add two and a half cups of sugar. This is making your simple syrup. Sugar is mostly dissolved. It's not that hot yet. We're going to throw the cores in here. Y'all, this adds so much flavor to this simple syrup. Now we're gonna let this start to boil. See, this is to a rolling bowl now. I'm gonna let this cook for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna let those juices from those cores really extract good into here. Turn the heat down about a minute ago. I'm gonna take and just remove the cores. Here my jars rattling back there. They're nice and warm. Thing we're gonna do is start with our warm jar. Just start packing the pineapple down in there. And you don't want to cram it down in there too hard, just kind of firmly place it down in there. Yep. Next thing is pour your simple syrup over the top. And you're going to leave a half inch headspace. That is recommended by the ball book. Next thing that is very important, first of all, if you're new to canning, the half inch mark, you're gonna wanna check it, barely touches the water. The next thing is the debubbling. Very, very important because bacteria, um, anything can hide down in there if you don't get the bubbles out, which causes the botulism. I'm going to bring you close so you can sh see the bubbles releasing. Now see all those bubbles releasing? So you see how important this step is? Now would be a good time to fill your rim to make sure you don't have any chips. I actually had one that had a chip while ago. I'm actually going to take that piece back out. It's a little bit too much. I feel like it's better to be safe than sorry. You don't want no siphoning or anything like that. Finger tight. into the pressure canner. You just leave your rack up like this, your lid open, and it keeps those jars nice and warm. You can see the steam until you're ready to lower it. lid on my water bath canner. Once it comes to a full rolling boil, I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. I've got all pints in here. If you was doing quarts, it would be 20 minutes. If you was mixing pints and quarts together, you're going to go for the what calls for the longest time, which would be 20 minutes if you was mixing both of those. All I've got is pints, 15 minutes of water bath processing. It's good to go. I saved my simple syrup. Um, you know, if it didn't have the pineapple flavor, you could use this for lemonade. It does have a little bit of the pineapple flavor, but we'll use it for some kind of lemonade. Um, don't let that go to waste. You know, my kids will love this. These lids I got 
I want to say at Target, Amazon has them as well. They got small mouth, wide mouth, and this is just a peanut butter jar lid. So anything works. Um, instead of, you know, save your good lids and rings. But yeah, so we're going to have some kind of lemonade out of this. That is what we're looking for. We're going to get our timer set for 15 minutes. Alright, our timer is going off. Going to turn the heat off. Lift the lid away from your face. And... I may have to take something to get one of those handles up. Lift it up, let it sit over the side, and we're going to let that sit there like that for five minutes. We're going to take our jars. Now I'm going to add them to my Canon Frenzy that I've had going on this weekend. You just want to set them on a towel. Kind of space them a little bit apart. These have all cooled and I've had the rings off of them so I've moved them closer together to give me more room. You're going to leave this alone for 24 hours. Once it's been 24 hours, you can remove the ring, make sure it's sealed good, wipe it off, put it in your pantry, and enjoy. All right y'all, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, if you've never canned a pineapple before, get to canning some pineapple because it is delicious. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure you're following us on Instagram at Pine Knot Family Farm because I try to post almost daily on there lots of different things that I'm canning and doing that doesn't make it to YouTube, that I don't vlog. So if you want more of Pine Knot Family Farm and you want more of what we're doing, make sure to go check us out on Instagram. Y'all have a great one. Until next time, God bless.